So we're asked to calculate the support reactions at A and B for the beam, and note that the directions are consistent with the sign conventions. This is referring to the answers. Um, so positive x and positive y direction are reflected in the signs here. All right, so the first step that we want to do is to draw the free body diagram, and then we should be able to apply the equilibrium equations to find those unknown support reactions. So the free body diagram. So taking across all the external forces, we've got this uniformly distributed load of 3 kilonewtons per meter. And then we also have our point load of just 3 kilonewtons. We've got a support reaction at A, and we can see that it's a pin. So a pin has a horizontal and a vertical force. So I'll call this um, AY and AX. And then at B we have a roller. A roller only has the one uh, support force and it's perpendicular to the surface. So it's a horizontal surface. That means that the support force is going to be vertical. And I'll call it BY. So I'll just quickly mark in the dimensions that we're given. So 2 meters, 1 meter, 1 meter. Alright, so to be able to solve for the support reactions, it's probably going to be handy for us to replace this distributed load with an equivalent point force um, at, a, at the same um, equivalent distance. So let's do that. So I'll call this the equivalent free body diagram. So everything else is going to remain the same. So we've got AY, AX, BY, the 3 kilonewtons. But this one is going to get replaced. So we can figure out the total size of the force um, that it has. So it's 3 kilonewtons per meter applied over 2 meters. So it's going to be 3 times 2, which is 6 kilonewtons. And it's going to be applied through the centroid of this shape. And since it's a rectangle, I'd expect the centroid to be um, in the middle. So down like this. So if we mark in the dimensions, um, it's a 2 meter rectangle, so halfway would be 1 from each side. So 1 meter. Now that makes the separation between the middle here and this point force 2 meters. And then 1 meter to the end. So now let's go ahead and apply our equilibrium equations. Uh, remembering we're trying to solve for all these unknown uh, forces. So I'm going to start with summing moments about here at point A. The reason I'm picking point A is because um, both AX and AY, which I don't know, are acting through the point, so they're not going to contribute to the equation. The only unknown that should appear in it is going to be BY, so it's going to be a bit easier to solve um, with this approach, since we're going to, going to end up with just one unknown in the equation. So AX and AY are out, as previously discussed. So now we've got the 6 kilonewton force acting in a distance in here of 1 meter. And this is going to try and push it clockwise, so it's negative. We've then got the 3 kilonewton force acting at a distance of 3 meters in here. It's also going to try and push it clockwise, so it's negative. We've then got BY, the reaction force on the end. The total distance in here is 4 meters. And it's going to go anti-clockwise, so it's positive. So if we solve for BY, it comes out to 3.75 kilonewtons. So if you go and look at your answers that you were given, so RB is the same as the reaction at B, so we called this BY, and RA is the reaction at A, so that's going to be AX and AY. So straight away we got 3.75, so that would suggest that, for, for RB I should say, so that would suggest that C is the answer, but we can go back and check um, to make sure that we also get 5.25 as well. So if I now apply my other equilibrium equations, so if I sum forces in the y direction to be equal to 0, I've got AY going up, so it should be positive. I've got the 6 kilonewtons going down, so it's negative. Same with this one. And BY is going up, and we just figured it out to be 3.75. So that's going to be added on the end. So if you go and solve for AY, it comes to 5.25 kilonewtons. And the only other thing is the, 
Oh, sorry, 5.25. The only other thing is AX, and this one's pretty easy. Um, since we have no other forces in the X direction, AX is going to be equal to zero. So that means that the resultant at A or RA is just going to be directly equal to whatever AY was, which was 5.25. So that's going to be this answer in here. So that's all there is for this question. And just uh, um, note that the next question actually follows on from this one.